All right, Coach Danny Irwin, welcome to the GohioCast podcast. Coach Irwin, you got to help me with all of the of the uh, stops along the way. You are the head coach currently at uh, West Liberty State University, correct? West West Liberty University now. It was West Liberty State there for a while, yeah. So it's, prior, it was, well prior to me. It was West Liberty State College when I was in, in, in college. Now it's WLU technically is the actual West Liberty University. Correct. Okay. And you came to West Lib, which is what we'll call it, which is what everybody calls it. You came from to West Lib from Wheeling Jesuit, correct? Correct. Which how far apart is West Lib and Wheeling Jesuit? 20 minutes? 20 minutes, yeah. It's like maybe technically eight miles, but about 20 minutes to the hilltop. Gotcha, because you got to go up a mountain. Okay. Mountain to me, yeah. <laughs> yes. So before that, you were at Wabash, Co Wabash College in Indiana, correct? Yep, I was there for nine years as an assistant coach there. Okay. And where where did you – did you wrestle in college? Where are you actually from? So I'm from northeast Indiana. I wrestled at, at Manchester College, now Manchester University. And following that, I, I coached high school for, for two years. I was head high school coach, head middle school coach, restarted the club, and – um, had two years of, uh, you know, you know, coaching wrestling at Bluffton High School, which is right by where I grew up. So wait a minute. Where did you go to high school? Uh, Norwell High School, just south of Fort Wayne. Okay. And how far is that from Bluffton? Uh, like 10 minutes, Bluffton High School in Indiana. Yeah, there's a Bluffton, Ohio, too. Okay. I was going to say, because there, there's Bluffton, Ohio, and they're not far from each other. Yeah, they're not far. That's wild. Okay. So Manchester. Is that where coach, um, head coach at Wabash, is it Coach Anderson? Yeah, so he was my assistant coach um, my first uh, couple years at Manchester before he took the head coaching job at Wabash. Okay, so that was the connection. He coached you at Manchester. Yeah, that was the connection. That and, you know, my, my best friend from college wrestled for Coach Anderson at Michigan City High School. So um, being, being good friends with Chris, uh, you know, probably got me a little connected to Coach Anderson a little bit quicker. Okay, so your college career started, coaching career started out at Wabash D3, correct? Well, yeah, Bluffton High School technically, but yeah. Well, but I'm saying your, your college coaching career, though. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, and every school you've been at, this is what's really amazing about you. You have won a trophy of some type in the NCAA team championships. True or false? A uh, True. Okay. So you were third at Wabash, correct? Yeah, we were third, fourth, third my last three years. Okay. And you guys had a four-time NCAA champion. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then, dude, this is amazing, actually. You take the head coaching job at a D2 school, Wheeling Jesuit. Are they even a school anymore, by the way? Wheeling University now. Yeah, okay. they, they're still in our conference, and um, they, got some, they got some good wrestlers on their team right now. But they were the school was going to fold all together, wasn't it? Well, they, you know, I think a, a challenging situation, and um, you know, there's there's new leadership there, and you know, being in a conference, I, that's about about all I can, can comment on that. Okay, I appreciate I appreciate your comments on that, and uh, holding it maybe a little bit. <laughs> that we don't have to do any editing. I, I appreciate that. But you were runner up. You were the team runner up, and I want to say 2018. Was that, is that right? Well, yeah. 20, 2019, uh, we were national runner ups. Um, you know, we went six for six, you know, six qualifiers, six all Americans, a couple national champions. And, um, yeah, it was a, it was a really, really good, good year. Just a really good couple of years. Uh, the team I inherited was, was already, you know, uh, really good and just, uh, you know, inherited a great group of guys and, you know, we were able to put together that second year and be national runner ups and have some, some awesome memories to look back on. Okay. So how many years total were you at uh, Wheeling Jesuit? Two years. In your second year, you were runner-up. Yep. <laughs> Dude, that's amazing. I think the year before we were we were thirteenth. Um, but you know that was like I got a, I came in with a great group of guys. You know some some you know just the family and culture and stuff that Coach Doyle, Coach Hedger, you know, a number of coaches helped help build there. Just you know it wasn't just. You know, there was a lot, a lot of people involved and, uh, 
yeah, just it took a took a lot of effort by by many to do what we did. Okay, so you leave there in 2020, correct? So following the the national championships, yeah, that's when uh, some turmoil hit, and at that same time, West Liberty's head coaching head coach, you know, Mitch Smith, um, had stepped out of college coaching, and um, you know, boom, bang, here we are now at West Liberty, you know, year number five, and uh, you know, God works in some amazing ways. So yeah, me and my wife and and we got two kids now, nine and six. You know, we didn't have to move. Um, just, you know, got a little bit longer of a commute and just, uh, you know, being on the hilltop, there's nothing like it. Okay. So you guys were runner up. What year were you runner up at Westlip? So we were uh, fourth, third year. Uh, we were fourth year two, third year three. And then last year we were sixth. Six. So you have been, so you were runner up at Wheeling Jesuit. You've been fourth and third. Your two trophies at West Live have been fourth and third. You haven't been runner up there yet, correct? Nope. Okay. The rankings, what's crazy to me is I see the rankings. Um, week to week, the rankings change. Sometimes you're your co number one. You've been number one. What is your ranking and the latest set of rankings for, for West Live? Uh, the last ones, uh, we were tied number one with Central Oklahoma. New so we're co number one in this last one. Yeah, the, from the coaches' side of things, another set of rankings are getting ready to come out um, on that. Uh, open mat, we've been, I think, second, third in the open mat, you know, rankings. And, um, yeah, we're in the mix. We're in the it's, mix. It's super promising. But, like, you're someone who, like, I think that what's wild to me is it's really hard for a lot of people to believe that they can actually win a trophy, right? I think it's hard for coaches to believe that they can win a trophy. Right. And I, and I, it's just like, until it happens to them, I don't think that they think that can happen. Right. Cause it's such a monumental task and what you guys do in, in NCAA division two, NCAA division three, you know, D one wrestling D one's only like, there's only like six to eight teams that are actually suited and built to, to do it year in and year out. Right. You guys can win a team trophy in a second year program, right? Like you can come in as a second year coach and be the national runner up. It's really hard to do that in the end, and you know, in D one or D three, in my opinion, but why are you guys so suited to do that? And why are, have you had so much success and being able to bring trophies back, whether it was as an assistant or a head coach, how, how have you been able to do it and, and sustain it at three different institutions? How have you been able to do it? Well, I think uh, you bring in the, bring in people that, uh, are going to support the student athletes at a high level. You know, you, you support them at a high level. You, you serve them, you know, first and foremost. And, you know, I think uh, when, when student athletes feel like you have their best interests at in mind and um, even, even when they may not like your decision that, uh, you know, through and through, you know, you're, you're serving them and, you know, they're going to, they're just going to grow they're, That trust is going to be there. They know that uh, your heart's in the right spot. And when you, when you start building relationships like that, that uh, I think it's that kind of trust, ultimately that, uh, you know, is going to shine, you know, at the end of the postseason in those most challenging moments, whether it be, you know, the, the blood round, you know, Friday night or, um, you know, the next day trying to win a, an individual title and, you know, winning those matches on day two to, to push your team, you know, over the, the finish line to, to be one of those final teams on the race platform. You were also very good in the championship finals as a coach, right? Um, you had Tyler Warner. He was an NCAA champ at Wheeling Jesuit, right? Mm-hmm. And then, also a national champion at, at West Liberty. He was he was a champ at both. Yep. What a freak. The old Claymont kid, right? Like, and you know, and and you know the, the crazy thing about him is he was a three-time state champ in Ohio, going for his fourth title. And he was the first guy that that ever happened to, that upset ever happened to as a senior. Did you know that? Yeah. I mean, it's one of those things that hey, he's he's a first for a lot of things. And sometimes it might come with uh what some people would perceive as uh Ah, uh, that sucks for him, but I think you know, just that's one of the awesome things about Tyler. I think uh, as as bad as maybe it sucked at the time, it's something that uh, you know he carried forth with him and learned a lot from, and allowed them to have uh, even uh, you know better moments later down the road, winning you know national titles and helping lead teams in NCAA team trophies. So then, Ty McGeary won for you last year as well at one eighty four, correct? 
Yep, he won it at, at 84. Cole Leo won a couple national titles at West Liberty. And, um, yeah, got a, outside the COVID year, I've had a good good streak of um, being in the corner for, for guys out there getting it done. Like, I think nine, you know, maybe nine straight years of being in the corner for a national champion. That that's that. Listen, your record speaks for itself. But you know, we have these schools that are you know, like obviously you're going to come to Notre Dame College um, on Thursday. Are you dueling both teams? Are you dueling both Notre Dame College and Grand Valley, or just one? Yeah. So I think we we duel Grand Valley at five o'clock uh, p.m. Uh, at Notre Dame, and then Notre Dame wrestles Grand Valley. And then uh, we're dual Notre Dame uh, after the after that. So three okay. three duels that evening. Okay. So you're the you get the set. You're gonna set the middle duel. Yep. Okay. But we're talking about a first year program in Grand Valley, and we're talking about Notre Dame College, which has won multiple titles. They've had years where they've won five individual championships out of the ten, right? Um, oh yeah. So we're talking like two real crazy ends of the spectrum, right? In the two teams that you're dueling. And Notre Dame isn't what Notre Dame used to be. Um, you know, they've had some crazy ch- change and turnover in coaches. Frank Romano retired. Anthony Ruff went to Ohio State. So they've had, you know, Sonny Marchetti's not there anymore. Um, so they've had some some things happen there, right? But they've done it. They've climbed the mountain. Then you have Grand Valley, which is a first-year program. Can Grand Valley do, can they be a quick startup can they do what you got, what, what Notre Dame college did? Can, can, is, is it possible? And maybe not them, right? Maybe, maybe it's a, another school. That's a startup, right? Maybe it's another, you know, maybe it's not Grand Valley, but I'm just saying, cause they're, they're there on Thursday. Why can you as a startup win so quickly at the D2 level? Why is that? Well, I, th- I think if you put the time in and resources into anything, you can, you can get it done. And, you know, Grand Valley, they're already good. They got some dudes, you know, they're, I think they have a, a true freshman at 25 who's you know, nationally ranked and you know, a couple of guys that have been in college and transferred there that you know have already proven they can win at the on the collegiate scene. And and uh you know, I think they had a guy maybe already there transferring from JUCO who's already he's got it done on the collegiate scene. And yeah, you know, they you know, it takes, you know, at least, you know, essentially right, you gotta have five all Americans no matter what division you're in to, if you're gonna have a chance to bring home a trophy. And um then you you get that six, seven, eight range and that's when uh, the real magic happens and you uh, you're competing for a title. So I think, you know, you spoke Grand Valley, you know, you look at their sports history, they, they got some, you know, premier teams competing in all sports there. And this is something that, uh, you know, is, you know, maybe uh, compared to some of the, the Penn States, the Iowa's where, you know, that, that deck is just stacked so heavily over history that it's not quite like that in, in division two or, um, maybe a division three that, that, that could be it, but ultimately, right. I think it's just a matter of getting in there and, and getting the work. And like you said, you know, making that belief come a reality, you know, then, uh, looking the other way and saying, ah, like we don't have this or we don't have that. Like you, you make jobs, you know, jobs don't make you, you make jobs and you make places great, or you can make places terrible. And, uh, that's, I think that's the nature of, of college coaching itself, whether it's college or, or high school. Well, it's wild to me because you guys are in a really good spot where you're at in West Lib is like you're right close to PA, right? Um, you're not far from WVU. You're not far from Pitt. Obviously, Whip Hill's right there. Then you've got Eastern Ohio, right? You're not far from Northeast Ohio, and you've gotten guys from all those places. Everything I everywhere I just said, you've literally gotten guys and they've been successful. But you know, you did that. You did that at the, at uh you know Wheeling Jesuit. You were really good and successful at uh you know obviously uh Wabash, right? Like so you've had success no matter where you go, but like geographically located, you're in a really good spot right now, right? Like yeah, even better than you were at Wabash, right? Like you're in you're in and it's, and it's effectively let's just say it's the same thing as Wheeling Jesuit. They're they're 20 minutes apart, right? Same region, right? Um, but you seem to just do it everywhere. You seem to do it and out of, out of, you know, what, 45 minutes an hour out of Indianapolis, right? Yeah, it was, uh, Wabash is in the middle of nowhere. I mean, I, right? I feel like. It's, it's not cut, close, right? Yeah, I feel like, you know, you cut your teeth at the place like that, you know, an all-male institution, um, really strong academics where, you know, it's not a, an Ivy League, but I would say it's in that next tier of schools below that with, you know, the success of the alumni and, and, and so forth. And, but yeah, you learn to, you know, you learn to, to do it there, then, you know, 
I think being in the, the location we're at now with, you know, uh, Ohio and, and Pennsylvania and, and, and West Virginia, that, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot easier to, you know, outside maybe the last 15 minutes of climbing the hill, you know, the, the drive into, uh, to, to our areas, you know, one beautiful, but two really easy too to get some, the best of the best. It, it's wild to me. Cause I've asked you before, um, when you, you're going as a Wabash guy, you're, you're selling the education and the D3 experience, right? And D3 NCA doesn't give athletic scholarships, grant and aid, right? Well, now you go in and you get a, I don't know if you guys got 9.0 or whatever you guys had as far as athletic scholarships, but now you have the ability to give kids athletic scholarships. That had to be a wild transition for you. And it happened so quick, right? What is it like going in and saying, hey, we got a really good academic school. You're going to get the pay to go here and fill out some financial aid and get some grant and aid, some scholarships through leadership and academics to, hey, we can give you a full boat. What is that like recruiting kids different like that? Well, I would say in, in some ways that, you know, you know, yeah, it makes it easier in some ways that, hey, you can, you know, you're not hoping, you know, just for good financial aid packages, the, the pop in there like we were at, we're at Wabash. But at, at the same time, though, the process is much of the same that, uh, you know, the, the last couple of years of coaching have just been, so much fun we got a great group of of guys and just you know, getting to know them their families our families have helped us cover so much ground um over the years you know that uh it just it's the same process it's just you know it, it looks a little bit different you know and that's something I, that I enjoy you know being able to to have guys access our coaching staff like they can and and to be able to spend the time I can you know in the wrestling room while also these guys getting a, a great education and now for us you know, adding women's wrestling that, uh, you know, we're going to add another, you know, group of just high level athletes that, uh, you know, their choice of sport is, is wrestling. So I think that's going to be an awesome thing, you know, for the Hilltop and it's going to make our men's team better. And, you know, our men's team is going to make our, our women's team get, get really good, really quickly. When does the women's team get added at Westlib? So next year will be full year of competition. So we're, uh, we're hot on the, the recruiting trail right now and just, you know, same process of, you know, finding out what kind of people they are and what their ambitions are, you know, you know, how badly do they want to develop, you know, how, how are they going to take advantage of the resources that, that we have at West Liberty? Cause we have some great ones um, from facilities, staffing, just, you know, our professors that, you know, so on down the line that, um, you know, building that culture, building that standard of, you know, these are the type of people we want to attract. So it's going to be exciting to have our women's team competing next year and just add that next, uh, I would say, uh, you know, group of people that's going to make the hilltop great. So how many have you added a coaching staff to that yet? And do you eventually become like almost what Mark Cody does at um, Presbyterian? Do you become the overseer of wrestling and hire a men's head coach and a women's head coach and oversee it? Or do you just remain the head men's head coach and then help along with the women's team? How does that work for you? And what's your role there? Yeah. So I'm the director of wrestling now. And so we're going to, you know, we're already, you know, I would say, uh, you know, rounding up uh, kind of a pool of, of coaches that, that we've been looking at. That's been nice. You know, we don't want to rush and just post it. Hope to get a good, you know, having a season to just check out potential candidates. And, you know, so that's that's something that uh, you know, the application process is about to open up and interviews following that. And um, that's going to be an exciting thing to hire a head women's coach and you know, I'll be, you know, coaching the men's as, you know, leader of the men's, but overseeing both programs. So then, you know, whether, you know, male or female, you, you wrestled on the hilltop while, you know, myself is at the helm overseeing everything. Like, this is what your experience is like, you know, this is, this is what we're chasing after to become the, the best wrestlers that we can be while also you know, getting that education that we want. And, you know, I'm excited that, uh, you know, to not only coach the men's, but at times, you know, help the, the women's and just, you know, be able to serve athletes and coach wrestling and, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking at your coaching staff and it says you have literally seven coaches, including yourself. How are you, how are you able to do that? And am I reading that correctly? Yeah. Well, you know, we're not, we're not limited like division one is, you know, on, on coaching staff. So we can, we can have a very robust staff and, you know, the cool thing, the, the majority of our coaches are West Liberty alums, you know, a number of them, you know, I got a chance to coach. And so it was really cool to go from coaching, coaching these guys to them, you know, being on staff and, you know, doing this together and, you know, to just continue to assemble, you know, people that, 
that want to want to grow wrestling and, and serve them. And, you know, we want to chase down championships. And I think the chase down championships, you look at, you know, the best programs across the country there, they're attracting, you know, really good coaches. And, you know, that's something I think is awesome for our athletes that, you know, they're going to have a, a good selection of, of a couple coaches that they can, they can gravitate towards and kind of be their, their people and then have some other coaches that will help them um, as needed outside of those couple, you know, main coaches that they might have. But yeah, it's, it's a, uh, it's a pretty nice thing. Who is the hat assistant? Christian, Mike, Chase, Cole, Ronnie, or Colin? Who is the hat assistant, or don't you do it like that? Well, I think it's something that they all have roles, you know, including myself. And, you know, it's something that, uh, you know, Christian, you know, he's somebody I, you know, I got to coach at Wheeling Jesuit. You know, he made the move up to, to West Liberty. And, you know, he's somebody that from day one at Wheeling Jesuit, he, you know, he was one of the first guys, him and Jared Donahue, who was an All-American on that 2019 team. Um, they were just the first guys to jump into individuals with me and, you know, maybe not, uh, you know, push the new guy away and just, hey, what do you want? What do you, you know, what what do we need to do? And so he he's probably somebody that knows kind of the system better than than anybody. And just, you know, he's a real critical thinker and just all, ultimately that, uh, you know, I, I like about our staff, just not a lot of egos, you know, that, you uh, you know, we're not going to coach every single guy. And um, at the end of the day, um, it's it's landing us in a good spot. Okay. You have one of the top rated heavyweights in the country. And I know she got two heavyweight coaches, Coach Carpenter and Coach Ronnie, Ronnie D'Amico. They are both heavyweights, right? Yeah. We got some big guys. You know, it's uh, it's worked out well. We got from little guys like, you know, Coach Leia, who was a couple time national champ and five time All American, all the way up to, to Coach Carp, who, uh, you know, is in, in his thirties, but uh, can uh, can take down anybody. Yeah, you know, he's still got it. <laughs> That's good. How about Ronnie, Ronnie, Ronnie's a trader. He's a what? He's a Lake Erie College guy. What's he doing? Ah, uh, he's he's amazing. Yeah, you know, I I inherited a, a good group of guys, and Ronnie was one of them that uh, just jumped in and said, "Hey, you know, what, what do you want? How do you want it done?" And you know, maybe he didn't always understand it, but man, he. He's got a huge heart. You know, he, you know, he's loved by his teammates and to be able to bring him back to the hilltop, you know, this year, uh, you know, it's, you know, he got, he came up second for another collegiate job and, uh, you know, their, their potential loss was, was our gain. So he's, uh, he's amazing. Yeah, I'm glad he got a chance to compete up at, at Lake Erie. He had a good experience up there and, um, but now he's back and, you know, helping, helping us. How do you pay them all? Well, you know, something that I don't think any, any coach gets paid for the hours that they put in, but uh, you know, through and through, uh, you know, we're happy with what we're, what we're doing. I recently tweeted out Willie Saylor, you know, I know, I know you're probably a big Willie Saylor fan as most D2 guys. He's not are. right. Right. <laughs> right. Um, he's never wrong. Um, he never liked to take, he didn't, that he, that he didn't post himself, but um. He did put out there, he's like, ah, there's some, you know, D1 director of ops and some assistant coaching positions coming open. And I quoted it and I said, oh, 80 to 90 hours a week for one third of what a 40 hour a week job uh, pays. Where do I sign up? Right. Did yeah, I, there's some truth to that. Did I tell any lies? No, hey, no, no lies there, but, uh, yeah, I think at the at the same time, much like a, a number of jobs, you 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 learn to to coach college wrestling. You learn some of that, and you get some of those CEO skills, like you said. That you you know you decide to stay in it, and you're happy with what you're doing. Like for me, I don't I don't have a job. You know, I'm I'm going to campus. I'm coming home from campus. Um, but yeah, I think the skills you learn during that time, like like you said, you could go you know work a another position and you know, maybe make more money and work less hours, but. Uh, at the end of the day, like man, I couldn't imagine myself doing anything else. Okay, I got I got to throw a a, uh, a hypothetical, right? Yeah. Joel Greenley, the joints are hurting. He's he's been at it for twenty five years. He just he just Joel just wants to ride horses and milk cows or whatever he does out there in Athens, right? Out in the plains, he don't want to be the head coach at uh, at Ohio U anymore. Whatever. Joel retires. Is that a job you go after? Or are you happy with the lane you're in with D2 wrestling? Do you go after a job like Ohio University, which what's that, 45 minutes away? Yeah, I don't know how far. I, honestly, I don't know if I've ever been on Ohio's campus before. But uh, I'll tell you what, 
Um, hypotheticals are, are always fun, but you know, you, you show me a place that, uh, you know, appreciates wrestling like the Hilltop does and has a passionate alumni that, that we do. And just, you know, uh, a group of colleagues that, uh, you know, support one another in the athletic department and, you know, yeah, maybe it's something that, uh, you gotta, you gotta at least, uh, have one conversation about, but I'll tell you what, uh, to be in a, be in a place that something I've seeked my entire life to be in a place that appreciates wrestling has, has opened up doors, has helped remove hurdles and just, you know, people, uh, care about one another. I tell you what, that's, that's why I mentioned before I'm, I'm going to campus. I'm coming home from campus. I, I don't work much. So you're, you're, you're pretty happy with where you're at, but why not take a look? Well, I think uh, where I'm at and where my family is at, I, I love what I'm doing and I love the, the tradition that we're, we're continuing to build upon. And I, I couldn't imagine myself anywhere else. I mean, uh, Wheeling Jesuit to, to West Liberty, you know, I had so, some opportunities to look at a, maybe a couple other places too. And, and I think uh, we chose West Liberty for, for all the right reasons. And um, it's lived up to everything that I, I thought it was going to be. And we're, uh, we're continuing to build and, and climb the, the direction we want to be. And we want to win team national titles. Okay. I think I was uh, <clears throat> confused. Athens is actually like close to Parkersburg. You guys are not close to them. You guys two hours. Yeah. You're like two and a half hours. <laughs> I, I get almost anywhere guys from here in two hours. Well, yeah, yeah, you're. That's a move, and I'm. I'm guessing if I'm guessing if you could commute, you know what I mean, if or something you could do that. That make the, But you get my point. Like I, I have to ask you, like, dude, you've had success at every level in NCA. Why not go and take the next challenge? I know a guy like you's motivated like that, and I, I you know, I have to ask you, but you're doing a pretty good job there. I, I, I don't know. It sounds like you got a pretty good setup there, right? Yeah, but I love it. Yeah, and we got some big things on the horizon with you know women's wrestling being one of them, and you know one of our goals there. Hey, we wanna we wanna have a you know one of our our girls make the the Olympics, make the world team in the next three to eight years. You know, with LA coming up, and Australia after that. That uh, you know, that's one of the things in uh, on my mind of you know laying the tracks down to to get us to that point. Okay, so I got some questions for you about guys that you've recruited. Did mm -hmm. Ty transfer into you from Pitt Johnstown? So, so Ty was at Wheeling Jesuit when I, already there okay. when I came in. Okay. So I coached him there. He went to UPJ the year I went to West Liberty. Okay. He was at UPJ for a year. And then he came back and wrestled his last two years at West Liberty. And he you know, was a national champion um, and then was uh, also a fourth place finisher. Okay. So Ty actually, what Ty does, he started with you at Wheeling Jesuit. You took the job up the hill. He went to Pitt Johnstown, then eventually got over to you after he wrestled one year for uh for UPJ, right? Yep, yep. So I've, I've recruited him a couple of times. Tried to recruit him to the whole top, right. you know, um, and then he hit the portal and luckily landed him out of out of Pitt Johnstown. And um, yeah, had a lot of a lot of fun moments. There's there's only one Ty Warner. Well, no, 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 no. Ty McGeary. Ty McGeary. Oh, McGeary. so Ty, Ty McGeary. McGeary. Yes, um, Ty McGeary. I said Ty McGeary. You, you uh, got me confused. Couple Ty, times. So that so that was Tyler Ty Warner, right? Yep. Right. He well, I said did, it was Ty Warner. Yeah. Ty McGeary only went to Pitt, Pitt Johnson. Johnson. Then yep. went to you, right? Yeah. So I I tried to recruit Ty out of high school, and okay, um, he. Yeah, I think he he probably you know, didn't answer two phone calls. Maybe courtesy talked to me for five minutes. Went to Pitt Johnstown and, uh, and you know was there for a semester. Left after a semester and then um, wanted to get back in the on the collegiate scene and um, was lucky to pick him up. You know, a big part of that was you know, his relationship with Warner and Craig, who was at Pitt Johnstown with him. And uh, you know, so you know, yeah, a little maybe a little bit of me, but a, a lot of you know, Warner and Craig and the relationship they had with, with McGeary. And, you know, at that time too, you know, we're starting to have that relationship with, with gladiators, you know, that club, you know, they're crushing it. Okay. So does Ty McGeary get another year after this year? He's got another year if he chooses to use it. He's in the COVID deal. He's in the COVID deal. Okay. Yeah. So he came over with Ty, Ty Warner and Connor Craig, right? Correct. Okay. 
So like I, we were confused there for a little bit. Yeah. Ty Warner is definitely tied into both to also Ty McGeary and is a big part of Ty McGeary coming from UPJ. Yeah. More so, you know, yeah, Warren, but Connor Craig, him and, and Ty were, you know, practice, you know, you know, partners and, you know, at, at Pitt Johnstown. And so, you know, Connor's like, man, you, you know, you have a chance to that guy, you got to get that guy, you know? And, uh, he's, he's been, uh, been amazing to be with every single day. He's, he's somebody that just, he's easy going, loves wrestling, crushes it academically. He's a double major accounting, cybersecurity, double major. Um, and so, yeah, he's, uh, he's doing it all. Okay. So you also have like Kyvon Grace, right? Yeah. He's, he's a, he's a goer, right? And yep. he's, he's a PA guy, right? He's a PA guy. You never, uh, he never ended up at this at the state tournament, but what? uh are you kidding me? N- nope. <laughs> that's wild, dude. That's he's that's really wild. Good. Yeah, I mean he's he's having quite quite the year. He 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 lost in the the match to go to the national tournament last year as a true freshman and you know he's having quite the year. I think he's maybe uh you know 16, 17 and five or four and he's beating some really good dudes and he's barely been outscored by some other really good dudes. So, and then you have Francisco, who's been ranked on and off the number one heavyweight, right? Yeah, Francesco Borsellino. And um, so he's in his last year. He's He might be Dr. Borsellino by the, the time it's done. But, uh, yeah, he's been an All-American at the National Tournament a few times. And he's got some unfinished business this year. What's crazy about him is I think he he's the guy that did, like, what he did a real weird path, right? Because he did, I think he's a two-time state champ. In Ohio, okay. Yep, state champ in Ohio, and then went prep, and then he went to West. He went to Western Reserve. My nephew Ian is the head coach at Western Reserve Academy, right? And he must have boarded, or they drove in every day, because it is wild for me to think about it. Um, I think he's from like south of Canton, right? He's from like Sandy Valley. Sandy Valley, yeah. Oh my dude. So that guy was a multiple time state champ in Ohio at heavyweight. And then did he do a post grad year or did he do his senior year at at, at a Western Reserve? Because I can't it says he took third in the preps. Yeah, I think it was a post post grad year, I believe. And um he originally, you know, originally he played football and wrestled at West Liberty and then decided that he's just gonna focus on wrestling. And um yeah, he's uh He's it'd be an interesting person. You know, he's done uh, you know major in social work. And imagine having a six foot five Italian man, you know, show up to your door to you know, maybe handle some issues <laughs> <laughs> with a sweet mustache and name. Yeah. Francisco, right. Yeah. OK, so those three guys, those three guys, I don't think there's any doubt in your mind. Well, we already know we already have the data. One of those guys can for sure win. He's already done it. But is there any doubt in your mind that those three guys can't win? NCAA titles for Westlip. Yeah, I think we got a, a good mix. You know, Nico Taddy, he's having a hell of a year as a true freshman out of out of West Allegheny, PA. You know, he uh you know, he's beaten some of the best guys in the country already. And you know, Alec Cook, all American. Uh, and we got a number of guys. Um I really like with where we're at and and you know, coming down the stretch run here. How many West Allegheny guys do you have? Because Ty, Ty's a West Allegheny guy too, right? Yeah, we got Jordan Waters. He was a national qualifier two years ago. Um, you know, he redshirted last year. You know, he's back in the lineup. Uh, you know, you know, Taddy, and you know, we got you know, we got some more West A guys coming coming our way. You know, they uh, they don't uh, they don't allow softness at Gladiators. That's for sure. That's they they uh, they get them right, and they're they're college ready. And uh, yeah, appreciate that that crew of people. Tell me about Gladiators and where that club's out of and where that relationship uh, grew out for you, Coach Irwin. Well, you know, a guy like uh, Alec Cook or Cookie or the Cowboy at 165, I recruited him to Jesuit. Um, and he told me no. Uh, we had uh, um, Frankie B. He was part of my first recruiting class, Bernura. He was he ended up being a qualifier at Seton Hill, you know, Tyler Alberts. So there was some at, uh, you know, we got to Jesuit, but then, you know, once we got to uh, to West Liberty, you know, breaking in and bringing guys really started with, you know, I'd say Jordan Waters and you know, his dad, Justin, you know, Denny Cook, you know, coach, you know, gosh dang, there's a there's a crew of dads right there that, 
you know, that, that place has come full circle. You know, they've, uh, they've done it the right way and you know, they love those kids to death and just, uh, yeah. Yeah. I think that's, uh, that's a hot spot of, of people right there that are, are being raised the right way. Where, where is that actual club's physical location? So it is, man, just a few miles from uh, the high school. From West uh, Allegheny? Yep. Okay. So yeah, it's, just, uh, it's right there by the airport off of 376 west of Pittsburgh, right? Yeah, it's like 45 minutes from campus. Okay. Mm-hmm. Wow. So that, that that's perfect. You probably get to pop up there whenever they tell you they got a guy who you can go and talk to going to be girls here soon. Right. Like, yeah. Some the club's going to grow into that. And wow. What a, what a hookup for you guys. What an awesome relationship. And, you know, it's like, um, I know that Josh Moore, um, and a lot of these D twos in Ohio do a good job with, with Burnett trained, right. Um, Ohio state does a good job with Burnett trained because the Stevers were Burnett trained. Yeah. So I know we have that type of relationship in Ohio, but man, Pennsylvania's just got, there's just so much over there, man. They got young guns, a couple different young guns locations, raging raisins. They've yeah. got, I mean, got quest quest with coach Akerley. I mean, dude, it is like, it is insane. They got dark night, which I want to say is Eastern part of the state. They have the clubs they have in Pennsylvania are second to none. And if you look every year, I know, obviously, you know, that the D ones is always dominated by, Pennsylvania qualifiers as far as numbers is D2 like that is NCA D2 dominated by Pennsylvania um, NCA qualifiers and Pennsylvania kids uh yeah that's a good question I don't know if I've ever really paid attention to that um it's a yeah. great I mean, you're right because I I mean if you look at it they just and they should right they should be proud of that they're so proud of they usually have double the qualifiers and then see one to the next state. And we're talking California, Ohio, Jersey, uh, Illinois, Iowa, Oklahoma, you know, the traditional powers. And like they're do- they're usually double the qualifiers. It's wild that what Pennsylvania has to offer. And, and you, you know, you got a, a club in your backyard that you get to buzz up to on a, on a weeknight and see what, what, what's coming out of PA and West Virginia and Ohio. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Everything's close. And just, uh, I think like anything, you start building pipelines of people and, you know, we got one coming out of Indiana with, with me, you know, being from that area to Ohio and PA. And now we got a couple of Jersey guys on our, our roster and staff. And just, you know, we, we got a good belt there. We, we take care of keep, keeping people coming out of that belt. Uh, yeah, that's uh that's a good place to be. You told me the formula five all Americans is the minimum. Basically it sounds like what you've done at uh, Wabash at Wheeling Jesuit and obviously at West Lib. Um, What's the path to, to to winning a national title this year in, in Kansas for you guys? Is it is it Topeka this year? Wichita. Wichita. What's the path to winning a, a title in Wichita? Obviously, it starts at West Lib, you know, in the Super Regional. What's the path, whether it be the amount of qualifiers, the amount of All-Americans, the amount of finalists? What is the formula for you to to, to, to really go – have a good super regional, get to the NCAA tournament and have a shot to win it. Well, I think it just starts with getting healthy. You know, something that uh, you got, you got to get into that regional pretty healthy. And, you know, you know, between that and being in shape, so you're ready to compete. Our, our regional stuff, <laughs> you add in, uh, you know, a couple of schools that we did and, you know, some of these schools have gotten better and it's, uh, it's going to be a tough one, but uh, ultimately, you know, it's uh, every, every year we've been right in the mix to have, you know, you know, seven, eight, nine guys. And you, you know, the more, more bullets in the gun, the, you know, the better odds you, you have. And ultimately with this program, uh, you know, I think we're going to be right on top of that mark. And then you, know, you mentioned that you got to have finalists. You got to have those big dogs, you know, make runs to the finals and, you know, put your up in those upper teens, to low twenties of points. And then, uh, you know, guys coming through that backside and ultimately it's not going to be a perfect weekend. I mean, last year we had, four all Americans, but we also had four guys um losing the blood round. You know, one was in by riding time. I think one was um in overtime. The other one was down to the last I think five seconds. And then we lost a one point match to the returning national champion. And any one of those go our way, you know, we're looking a lot better on day two. <laughs> you know, we're not finishing sixth place. It's just a matter of maybe what color trophy we're gonna get. And um but 
you know, that man, we wrestled really hard last year. And I think we're going to do much of the same this year. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm, I'm looking forward to what, the, what these group of guys are going to do, especially after some of the adversity that we just faced. And you know, we didn't have a great national duels and, um, but we bounced back really nicely. And, um, you know, I think we've matured a lot just in the last two weeks on what it's going to take day in and day out. Not that you've thought about it. What happens if you do win those four matches? Right? Not two of the four. What happens if you win those four matches and you have eight All Americans? Are you the national champ last year? I know that, you know, woulda, shoulda, coulda, ifs and buts, right? I get all that, right? Would you have won the national title with a champ, three other All Americans, and four eighth placers? Is that is that a thing? It would have been neck and neck. I think Central Oklahoma had eight last year. Um, I think I'd tell you one thing. I wouldn't have had tears in my eyes on Friday night last year. I would have, I would have been smiling year to year with eight going into day two. And, um, you know, a lot of ha happy athletes along, along the way. And, um, yeah, that's, that's the tough part of NCAA. There's some crying and there's some celebrating. And, uh, you know, we had a little, maybe, uh, not, uh, not as much as celebration as what we would have liked to have had last year. I'll be okay. a lot of great moments. Okay. But what, what sets it all up is the super regional. Um, people don't understand the NCAA Division II model. It is not, you don't qualify out of a conference. You qual qualify out of um, six super regionals. Am I getting that right? Uh, there are six super regionals. Top three go. So so top three in each super regional. Um, and they've recently changed it. Um, it used to be top four, didn't it? Top four, four regionals. Correct. Okay. Hill top system four. then. Now they see the national tournament. Yeah, and then you have in NCAA Division II, there is no wild card at large bid. If you do not qualify on the one day super regional, you do not compete two weeks later in the national tournament. Is that correct? 100% correct. You got to have your day. Okay. It, it It's such an important, you know, day. If there's an injury, it's over, right? It's not like the Big Ten tournament or the MAC tournament where you can make weight. And then they, the coaches can vote you in, right? It, it, it's not like that. Um, how do you like it? Uh, are you torn? Was the D3 qualification system similar to the D2 qualification system? When I first started coaching, we had a wild card system. And can't say I loved it. You know, I hate I hate politics. Uh, I like, you know, hey, if you know what it takes, it, it takes that and you can prepare for it rather than hoping to get a vote or not. One of the years we had a guy named Jake Strasball. He was a three-time placer out of Orville, Ohio. Um, he uh, went to nationals as a freshman. He didn't go back the following two years and then went back as a senior and didn't get a wild card on the year. He won the Midwest Classic. He won four, four of the five matches he wrestled that year. I believe those four of those five guys were D2 All-Americans that year. Wow. And he didn't, get a, he didn't get a wild card that year. Um, so, you know, my, my heart still hurts for Jake and, um, but, uh, so I, you know, there, you can have it both ways, but ultimately, you know, I'm not going to change, you know, what it's going to be. I, I know what we got to do and, you know, I, I'm preparing myself every day to try to put these guys in position to do it. And, um, it's going to be a, be an exciting one on the Hilltop, uh, you know, come March, I think March 2nd, Saturday, March 2nd. And how many teams are in the super regional in your super regional, the West Liberty super regional? Yeah, we have 12, I think. Maybe one other region has 12. The other ones have 11. Okay. So you guys are in a position where you've added schools because schools, the NCAA Division II continues to add and grow how it is, right? Mm -hmm. uh, is Fairmont State in yours now? They go to Super Region 1. They go to 1, okay. Yeah. Who all is in yours? So we All the Ohio schools. Okay. The two Michigan D two, so Davenport and Grand Valley State, okay. and then us, Wheeling, uh, Glenville State, and Davis and Elkins. I think that makes twelve. Where's Davis and Elkins? Elkins, West Virginia. Okay, so the yeah. West Virginia D two schools all come to you. Uh, no, Fairmont, Fairmont does not. Fairmont goes up. Fairmont goes up, and then um, I feel like I'm missing one, but yeah. They they go up maybe maybe Bluefield yeah Bluefield State goes with us too so that's the other division too that uh, comes up in our region. Got it. Okay. Wow, that's a nails region, dude. <laughs> yeah, I mean, oh, I man. think five of the 
five of the top 10 57 pounders in the country are in our division or in our region. And only three of them are going to, you know, only three can go, you know, so, what's, you know, what's the other like load? A couple other regions too. What's the other loaded weight? Like that? that's like 157. Um, 149s, I think got maybe five of the six guys were at nationals before. Wow. You know, and then our freshmen, you know, uh, you know, it's a good one. Um, wow, dude, that that's crazy. And Christian Small is the number one guy, isn't he? Yeah, he's uh, well, he's was three. He could he could probably be number one coming up. He just had a big national duels. Okay. Um, yeah. And then Jack Haskins, number two. Mm-hmm. I know that. I know those names. And then, um, wow, you guys just it is loaded, right? Because there is, and you added in Grand Valley, which has three top ten guys, right? Yeah. Oh my God, what a mess! I don't like that. Hey, it takes what it takes. Yeah. Uh, did you guys win it last year? Uh, yeah, we've won the last three super regions. So you've won the last three. Well, okay. So we talk about the path then says, you know, we, we should obviously you, I know you, you're probably focusing on what, what are we doing in the region? Right. What is the, what, how do you get eight? Was it eight qualifiers last year? Total? Uh, yep. Eight last year. Yep. What do you got to do to get nine or 10 this year and, you know, win a fourth, go four P how do you got to do that? We really got to make these days count. We got a couple of weight classes that, you know, not that they uh, are way off, but, um they they got some ground to cover and they they're starting to show some flashes of it and they got to turn those flashes into a of the brightest light ever and i think they're you know continuing to believe more in themselves and just continuing to bring it together we have some young guys in the lineup this year and just challenging our old guys like this is a good time of the year to they felt what this time of the year is like the grind of of the middle of the year that uh we got to make these days count and so that uh march looks looks how we want to have it look like will uh ty be a one seed at 184 will borsalino be the one seed at 285 how many one seeds will you have going in as of right now like i know obviously some things didn't change you could this duel right this duel could 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 throw a monkey wrench in it because both these teams the this try coming up with with mm-hmm. uh, with grand valley and um notre dame but who are your one seeds right now? Who look like they're on pretty firm ground right now for one seeds for you guys? Yeah, if it was today, um, our 184 and, and McGeary and Borsalino would be the one seeds. And then we'd have um, one, one, two, three, four, five, you know, maybe five or five other guys in the top two or three, maybe another one seed. You know, there's a weight class that, uh, They've all had some wins, but they've all had had some losses that you know maybe are some head scratchers at times. Gotcha. What weight's that? Uh one sixty five. Uh, weird weight, huh? Yeah, it's been a, been a weird weight. You know, our guy was an All American last year, and he's he's wrestled everybody that stepped across from him. He's he's wrestled every event except this very last duel, and uh, um, yeah, he's somebody that um, and he he brings the brings the heat every single day, and. I'm excited about what where he's at and where his maturity level's at, and you know Cookie's gonna gonna crush at the end of the year, just like he has any other year. Is this Alec Cook? Yep. And he's all American for you guys. Yep. Yeah, man, that it is just I love the amount of like parity and like the ability that other teams can win. I love D two, man. I've only been to one D two NCAA tournament, and it was the one in um. Cleveland and I called the finals and uh Notre Dame College had five champs. It was wild. It was wild and they like ran away with the team title. But it was like crazy because you'd have number one seeds who were undefeated who would get beat in the finals by guys with five and ten losses. It was like it's not like a, that at the D1 tournament. Okay. The Penn State guy's not ever getting beat by the Sacred Heart guy. It's not happening, dude. Right, yeah, you're probably not, you're probably not going to see that. Right, and that's what Especially I love about- right now with what they're doing. Ah, uh, dude, yeah, don't, that, yeah, I can't. Right, like, think about. I want you to just think about this. Don't think about it, what it, what it takes for Penn State to win the NCAA title. Think about what it takes for Penn State to lose the NCAA title. 
I don't think people think about it that way. Like they would have to have like catastrophic, like the bus would have to crash. Like it would, I mean, dude, it's not be like the Philadelphia Eagles starting 10 and one. You're right. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 crazy because and then where you got your tournament, there's not like there could be a favorite going in, like UCO or Lander, right? Right? You guys, UCO, Lander at the top are like the odds on favorite. One of those three should be your champ, right? Am I am I wrong there? I think it could be. I I think there's some other really good teams, you know. You got St. I mean, Cloud and sure, sure. Yeah. Um I mean, whatever, man. Lake Erie College could could go off. They got a bunch of guys who could win national titles, right? Like they're they're good, right? I mean, hundred percent, right? Like we get it, but it's like you know who's winning the, you know, Penn State's winning, you know it. You and I both know it. I can see the Iowa stuff in the background. I get it. They they ain't winning, man. It's not hey. good. Yeah. I don't right, know, my 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 team's the West Liberty Hilltoppers. I, outside, I just like wrestling. I am looking looking forward to going out to Penn State for Olympic trials this spring. That's gonna be fun. That is gonna be actually really cool. And but once again, how I mean, the question there is, how many Nittany Lion wrestling got club guys? Right, that would be my my big thing there. We lost coach for a little bit here. We're gonna see if we can get Coach Irwin back. Hopefully, we do. And um, he might have lost his phone. He might have lost uh, the link or his phone might have died. So we'll get back with him. We'll check it out. And um, yeah. Thanks for checking it out. It was good. 